Everyone, I would like to talk about carabiners, specifically the Petzl AMD or AMD, AM, AM apostrophe D, AMD. I'm going to be calling it the AMD Triact Lock Carabiner. If I remember correctly, Petzl makes two AMDs. I think one's a screw gate or screw lock, and the other's a triact. I, I think that's what they call it, or triaction. Uh, basically, meaning that doesn't have a screw it has a three movement action so I'm gonna be talking about this and comparing it to some other carabiners um, like a screw gate this is just a I think it's a black diamond rock lock and then this is just a cheap thing that I keep my keys on so why am I talking about this what's my background um, I work with radio stuff for my job so sometimes I need to install antennas check antennas, check cabling, uh, climb towers for various reasons that have to do with radios. I also rock climb, uh, indoor, outdoor, mainly indoor. And that's both bouldering and top roping, but obviously bouldering doesn't apply to this because you don't use ropes. So needless to say, I've used a lot of carabiners in actual working or sports situations. And I'm not just some basement dweller who's just making stuff up or just repeating other people's points. This is coming from experience. So this Petzl AMD, uh, AMD Triac Lock. So if I remember correctly, Petzl makes two AMDs. I think one's a screw gate, one's Triac. Uh, the difference is the screw gate has a screw, screw mechanism to lock the gate. And the AMD Triac has that Triaction lock. So with these. I only use these for work. I don't own any myself. I just borrowed this from work. Um, my work bought them, so we use them. Now, if you're thinking about buying one of these, please listen up. This is from my experiences. Your experiences may not mirror, the, may not mirror these, but these are from mine. If you are looking into buying a carabiner, don't buy these. I don't know if all triact locks suck. Um, I know these fundamentally aren't bad carabiners. I mean, this it's like 28 kilonewton. Yeah, 28 kilonewton going that way. It's like, I think eight going that way. So it's, it's a super strong carabiner. And functionally, it does work very well. It doesn't feel cheap. It's pretty lightweight, all that stuff. But when you're actually up on a tower or, God forbid, if, if you're up rock climbing and you need to monkey with your gear or whatever, uh, this is gonna be terrible. And here's why. It's easy enough when I'm off a tower on the ground, I have two hands free, no chance of falling unless my legs give out. I can just open that up, not a big deal. Even one-handed, it's, it's not as bad. But I can tell you that on a tower, everything changes because you're, I don't know, 50, 150, 300 feet up off the ground. Uh, you're holding on for dear life. You're tired because you just climbed up that high. And now you have to fiddle with your gear. Now, obviously, tower climbing is going to be different than rock climbing. You know, rock climbing, you're just kind of going up, and then you have to clip into a... Um, uh, I can't remember what they're called. Um, those little pieces of, uh, of nylon webbing with a carabiner on each end. Quick draws. There you go. Clipping into quick draws. But when you're on a tower, you have a bunch of other equipment that you're moving around. Um, you know, things like positioning lanyards, where I've run into the most problems using these. Uh, maybe you're repositioning your rappel device or clipping in for a rescue using like a pickoff strap or something like that. Uh, I usually go pretty carabiner heavy with my stuff, so I end up moving stuff around a lot, you know, using carabiners to clip something onto or whatever. So something that I found with these is these are incredibly hard to operate one-handed when you're up on a tower. Um, and it's because you have to rotate this a lot. It may not look like a whole lot. I believe it's, yeah, I think it's just a, just a 90 degree rotation. But uh, that's a lot if you're trying to do it one-handed, especially in your offhand. Because I've found that, I don't know, maybe I just have child hands, but I usually end up running out of finger space. And so my fingers are barely on there when I actually do break that gate open. Um, so there's been plenty of times where I've been trying to clip into a tower, you know, trying to clip my position lanyard in so I can take my weight off my hands. 
and I, I just can't get it open. Second, this design isn't very intuitive. Um, I mean, obviously if you practice with it all day, you can get it open, no problem. Just sitting there screwing around with it. But if, if you're actually up there, if you don't climb very often, if you have more important things to do than just do that all day, um, you're gonna get up there and probably fumble around. Uh, there's been a couple times where I've had to adjust something or whatever and I, I have to actually look down and like think my way through it and figure figure out like okay that goes up that turns I don't know maybe I just gave away the fact that I'm like 100% Neanderthal and I'm just not on that big brain level I don't know but for me personally it's it's just sucked when there's much better alternatives like screw gates um, so yeah they, they're just not great which is surprising because everything I've ever used from Petzl is awesome their gloves are just absolutely incredible. I've never owned better gloves. Um, their harnesses are super comfy and well designed. Their their descending devices and belay devices are great. Most of their carabiners are awesome, but this specifically is it just has issues. Um, it doesn't feel cheap. You know, it doesn't really rattle a whole lot. But I've noticed that when you're opening it, and this happens especially with one hand, normally you just have to get the upper part of the carabiner to clear this hole you know seems fine in theory however if you're putting pressure on it you can start to retract the lock and then it sticks so as you, as you can see it's it's not locked at all I mean this this can't turn but what's going on is it's sticking down there and that makes it so you really 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 have to push and with a little bit more twisting you can finally break that I think it might also be catching on the back side as well. Yeah, it does. It does catch on the back side. So, it's, it's really, it's just a pain in the ass. Uh, one of my biggest fears is being, however, far up in the air and just straight up breaking my stuff. You know, I, I, don't, I don't ever want to have to, like, climb back down because I ripped my harness up or, like, oh, I drop my descending device and I have to repel with like a mutter hitch or something that's super sketchy like that. Um, not good times. So that's what it feels like every single time I've had this catch. Cause it's like, oh wow, I just broke that carabiner, sweet. Um, so yeah, I, it just, it, it sucks. I mean, functionally, these are, these are just not good carabiners. Uh, something much better is a screw gate. Uh, I have a black diamond because this is a really, really burly carabiner. It's lighter than the Petzl. Um, I think this is 24, yeah, 24 and 7. It's 24 kilonewtons that way and 7 that way. So just a little bit less than the Petzl. Uh, but, I mean, this was a lot cheaper. I think this is like a $10 carabiner or something like that. Yet it's got the ratings and it's got the functionality. So... With screw gate, with any any good screw gate that's actually made for climbing from a good brand, when it's locked, you're totally safe. I would absolutely trust that, even with ropes rubbing against it or whatever. Um, and yet, it's easy enough. Let's see what way does that go? Okay. Yes, and it's easy enough to disengage with just one one finger, um, with your offhand, that is. Um, and I've also noticed that it will. This might just be this carabiner. I've also seen it on other screw gates, but I'm not sure all of them are like this. But once you spin it up and it's fully locked, it will kind of reach the end of the thread and then self-tighten. So you have to put some pressure on it before it actually breaks, and then you can fr spin it freely, which I, I'm a huge fan of because obviously, you know, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna climb with something like this that doesn't have any kind of lock because I'm terrified of my ropes coming out. I don't know, for some crazy reason. So, screw, screw gates versus triax, especially the uh, the Petzl. I definitely prefer screw gates. Um, having used both, these are so much better. So much better. Um, I think really the only benefit of the, the triax is it, it's a little bit safer. It gets kind of on two fronts. It's, it would be a lot easier to disengage a screw lock, you know, just from rubbing on ropes or something like that. And if you're in a hurry or whatever, you're just clipping in, you know, you clip yourself in and then you're like, okay, you know, I'm good to go. 
That gate's not closed. It might as well just be one of these. Whereas with the tri Triact, it does have that auto lock feature. So if you close it, it's locked. It's going to stay closed. Uh, yeah, so I, and if I remember correctly, it's either OSHA or ANSI, or maybe both of them. They've switched to saying, like, no, you can't use any screw gates. You have to use Triact if you're doing, like, tower climbing or rope access. So if, if you're governed by OSHA and ANSI with whatever you're doing, then I guess you're kind of screwed. But, um, yeah, if, if you can use anything else, then just don't waste your time. Just get a screw gate or some other closure method, um, and you'll, you'll be having a much better time.